Hi, I'm Matt Vella of CapsComputers.com. Here I'm today with Manu Inte Reme. Uh, how's it going, mate? Good, man. How are you? Yeah, all right. Enjoying your stay in Australia? I'm digging it, man. I, I happened to get here for the, the rain. Does, this, does it always rain? Like, just constantly? No, um, I think that's an English uh, type thing. We're usually known as like really sunny and it's usually great and then this whole weekend so it's the a the lions sun. come to town and the, they bring the rain with them. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, I, it's, they're not loving us this year. But uh, yeah, anyway, so... Um, that dude slipped on that kick. Did you see that? I mean, come on, for the win and it dropped. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, that was insane. Oh, that was the f yeah, football last night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so any anyways, um, so uh, today we we're talking all about Star Trek and, and uh, just all, all, all that sort of stuff. So um, t tell us about a bit about that because there's a big uh, aspect of your career. And yeah, I, working on Voyager was an incredible experience. Um, it's coming up in October, we've got a new film called Star Trek Renegades, uh, directed by Tim Russ and, and starring me and Tim Russ and Ethan Phillips and... Walter Koenig and Bob Picardo and J.G. Hertzler and um, why do I always forget his name, man? The kid from Terminator. Um, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Furlong is in the film and Corin Nemec and it's a, it's a great script and uh, it started as a Kickstarter project. It'll probably be a, a TV movie or something like that, um, if not a DVD. Um, and uh, it's exciting. I'm going to strap the Echeb costume back on, uh, except he's fully been... he's sort of an evil, badass version of himself. It's been 10 years and a lot of bad things have happened to him since we've seen him last. Um, it's kind of a darker look at the Star Trek universe. A bunch of characters that, you know, actually I think three, you know, pretty well-known characters in, in the Star Trek universe die in this film. So um, it's going to be a pretty awesome uh, film. The, the Tobias Richter, this badass CGI guy, is doing all of our CGI. Um, we're shooting it at Laurel Canyon Studios and um, uh, should be ready sometime next year. Star Trek Renegades. Yeah, it's amazing what Kickstarter can do these days. Uh, a lot of uh, popular TV shows come back. Veronica Mars, um, I think that, that, that did something with that. Um, yeah. Zach Braff's got a new project through Kickstarter. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so you said like, it's darker, it's, it's new. Do you feel like the J.J. The, the Abrams type films have like, influenced this in a way? I don't think so. I mean, I think... Uh, there's definitely a similarity to uh, Into Darkness as far as the tone, I think, of this film. You know, it's, he, JJ definitely did go to a darker place, it's yeah. Into Darkness. Um, uh, but I, don't, I think they were written at, you know, by completely different people at completely separate times. Um, so I, I don't want to you know, compare it to JJ's film. First of all, JJ had like a billion dollars to make his movie. <laughs> and um, yeah. we, we have uh, you know, less than a quarter of a million to make ours. Um, but it, for, you know, I'm highly impressed with the new films. They're, they're amazing. They've captured the whole, the whole Spock, Kirk, I mean, and Bones dynamic. It's all there. The actors are well cast. The stories are well written. I can't imagine, actually. I almost didn't go see Into Darkness because a lot of people have said it wasn't this or it wasn't that or it was just a rip off of Khan. And I almost didn't see it because because so many people said not to. And then I went and I'm like, what more could you ask for, as a Star Trek fan, than perfection? That movie was so good. I, there's certainly a lot of fan service in that, and um, in that aspect, you sort of coming back and, and all the other guys. The movie, that's that's a lot of fan service as well. Like, uh, it's, it's it's great to see that you know the there's so much uh, um, you aim for so much to just please all the old school fans as well. It's great. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't have any say in what happens in the Star Trek universe, but if it were me, if I did have that control, you know, I, I would want the new show to be a, a sort of Star Trek universe show where you could. It maybe t it maybe it took place at the academy, and you could have characters from every single series make returns and guest spots, and you'd have a new cast, but you'd also have like maybe some of the teachers at the academy would be Spock or some of the old school, you know, and, and just get as many cameos and and uh, guest stars, uh, it, you know, sort of a Star Trek universe type of of, of program. Um, they were going to go with a show back during Voyager it was whether they were going to do a show called Star Trek Academy or Star Trek Enterprise okay. and Academy was going to be it was going to take place at the school like in the new films where they show the you know 
uh, where you go to school to be, join Starfleet. So I think that would be a good idea for a new show. So, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great that, that all these actors are coming on board and, and all these uh, cameramen and effects guys from the different programs have joined the project and um, just trying to make something that the fans enjoy, you know. They want more, that's, that's for sure, you know, and I, I think uh, Paramount or CBS or whoever owns Star Trek doesn't want to uh, water down the quality, you know, the, the, the films by putting on, doesn't want to risk how much heat the films have by, by a bad TV show. So, but I still think the fans would love more Star Trek TV, so I'm hoping that happens. Well, a good point of that is uh, now two sort of different sort of timelines, sort of, you could say. I could say this new film and, and got the others going on. And uh, th that's really great when you, when you think of that. Like, like you said, expanding universe in a way, uh, it, it keeps going on. But that's, it's, uh, it's yeah, great. It's, it's, the J.J. film is really smart because it, it, it almost is like... It is a separate alternate, alternate reality, but the way they have it written is that it could almost not be. It could almost be the reality that we've seen already. Because they, you know, they explain how Khan got dropped off, and in that later, in the, in, in, when Kirk and Spock are old, and they, they, they find Khan back, back where they dropped him, you know? It could, it's like, I'm not so sure it's an alternate reality, you know? Um, it could just be the one we've, you know, it's written that smartly, you know. I, I, re I was reading on, uh, online about, um, there were some people talking about with Khan and that, how they got uh, a white actor play him and it's a different sort of nationality and stuff. But then you could also say it's a different timeline, it's a different sort of alternate reality as well, so you could still continue them both. And yeah, that was a big, you know, Garrett uh, Wong was on the phone with me and talking to me about why didn't they find a, a, an actor of, of what, what was Khan originally, an Indian, right? Or, or, um, and it, for me, I think it would have been nice if they looked, and maybe they did. Who's to say they didn't? Yeah. Um, but that Benedict Cumberbatch, that's his name, I believe, that actor's so good. <laughs> That for me, you cast the best guy, um, and he was phenomenal. So I had no no gripes. I could see as an Indian actor how you would be like, "What the hell?" Um, but I think he was probably the best actor for the part, and that's the reason he got the job. You know, I had the same feeling when I saw the Avengers when um that Samuel Jackson played Nick Fury because the comic character is yeah. white. But Samuel Jackson's a badass actor. Yeah, he's like, great. So why not? You know, yeah. Yeah, whatever works, really. Yeah. Um, as an actor yourself, um, through all the Star the Star Trek universe, um, has there been like a certain role or a certain episode you ever played where you felt like that was where you really shined? Are you proud of? You know, I'm proud of all the work I did as Echeb, except for those first three episodes where he was just kind of a bratty kid, just um, saying no all the time. And I, when I first got that part, uh, and he he became Echeb, those first three episodes, he was just kind of a brat, and he would just, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. And I was like, man, I really don't like playing this guy. But then all of a sudden, the writing got really great for him, the, with the episode where I went back to my parents and. And then the episode where I gave up my cortical node for seven, and the the Q2 episode, and um, they they really, you know, he became a man, and and you know the whole relationship between him and Seven was clearly defined. And um, I go back, and when I when I watch those episodes, I've done a lot of indie films since, um, and I liked. I mean, I enjoyed my work on One Tree Hill too. I did some good work on it, but. Some of these indie films I've done recently, I won't mention which ones, because <laughs> there's one that's about to come out that I just, I, I really wasn't very good in it, man. I watch it and I'm just like, oh. And then I, I, I watched, you know, I watched some Star Trek after that and I was like, I used to be so good, what happened? Um, but no, I, I mean, I'm really proud of the work I did as Echeb and it was, it's a result of good writing, uh, hard work and um, and working with actors that really knew what they were doing and I was young I was a young actor I was 20 when I got that role so um, you know I was soaking up as much as I could from that from their uh, knowledge and 
it, I think it shows. You know, so. I'm glad you kind of mentioned One Tree Hill because I was going to say um, you've also done a lot of roles in uh, sort of soap operas and sitcoms like uh, there's One Tree Hill, uh, I think it was Las Vegas, if I'm correct. Las yeah, it yeah, was Vegas, 24. Um, I think uh, King of Queens, am I correct? Yep. Yeah, um, what are those type of shows like different to, say, a sci fi kind of world? Um, you know, all television drama is pretty much the same as, as far as acting technique goes, although the sci-fi, at least Star Trek, wants a more theatrical delivery. Uh, they do a lot of pausing in Star Trek, you do a lot of, you're very, uh, cl you know, um, the one difference between Star Trek and like your normal dramas is they want you to really enunciate. They look for Shakespearean trained actors, people to, the, you know, because the, um, you can tell Star Trek is very, when they speak, they speak very clearly in Star Trek and it's very theatrical almost, you know. It's not like, uh, um, you know, it's not natural. It's very like oh, a little over the top and you have to find a way to be a little over the top without being phony and so it's tricky um, and then a drama like 24 or, or One Tree Hill you just have to be natural you know I just played a bad guy a drug dealer I just had to you know just be a just you know find that character but just you know there wasn't in Star Trek you go I'm calculating neutrino trajectories in One Tree Hill, you go, give me that wallet, bitch! You know, there's a, there's a difference, you know. The, the difference between, uh, the, you know, a drama and like a three-camera comedy, a sitcom like the King of Queens or Sabrina the Teenage Witch, or, um, and I just auditioned for a show uh, recently called Whitey that's going to be badass. I didn't get the part. But the difference between those shows is that those shows, you, they really want you to spit the dialogue out, you know, get it out really quick. Um, like, if you watch How You Met Your Mother or Seinfeld, it's all really high energy, get the line out, get the joke out, you know, and that's even more over the top than, uh, you know, Star Trek. It's, it's almost like you do a, a play. Um, so that's the three differences between, you know, in acting technique between three camera sitcom, drama, Star Trek. Anyways, I won't keep you much longer. Um, so thank you very much for everything, and uh, yeah. keep up with good stuff. Uh, is there anything else coming out that uh, you'd like to talk about or anything? Yeah, there's some, uh, I've got a film coming out that I executive produced called Benjamin Troubles. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, everything that, uh, that's coming down the pipe, including a thriller called Dark River, uh, World War II film Fortress, uh, you can go see now. Um, just check out my Facebook page, the Manuente Reme fan, fan book page official. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Mono Ante Reme. And um, pretty much everything that I've got coming down the pipe, I promote the hell out of on my Facebook. So, so one more thing is uh, I've, I've been painting with my girlfriend uh, for the last three years. And I've had some gallery openings and some, some success in that world. And if you want to see some of the paintings, you can go to FBA Collective. It's a Facebook page. We've got all our stuff up there. So make sure to include the link for that. The, yeah. the link is um, um, www.facebook.com backslash great backslash great art one two three four. Great art one two three four. All right. Well, thanks very much. I hope you enjoy staying in Australia.